sexual disorders. Yes, that is today's topic. Now, the first thing some might think are sexually transmitted diseases or other biological related issues, but we're not teaching a high school sex ed class. We're tackling the taboo around sex and explaining what a sexual disorder is and how they can affect your life. So let's talk about a few of the rare sexual disorders to arm you with a little more knowledge to care for yourself. Number one, hypoactive sexual desire. Hyper means a lot to the point of maybe too much. Hypo means less than what's considered average. Hypoactive sexual desire is having very low interest in sex. That's how normal and healthy sex is with age. It's normal to slow down and have times where sex isn't on the priority list, but there is still some activity happening. Hypoactive sexual desire, which will shorten to HSDD, is when that non-interest is persistent and causes anxiety. If you ignore it, it can cause friction in your romantic relationship and even become disruptive. HSDD is an absence of sexual interest, not a passing feeling. So if someone's meh with their partner, but still gets hot and bothered looking at a firefighter calendar, not HSDD. Biological factors such as hormonal imbalances and situational issues can cause HSDD. But wait, the good news is that there is treatment. Talking to a healthcare professional can help figure out what next steps need to be taken. Number two, post-orgasmic illness syndrome. Post-orgasmic illness syndrome, or POIS, is an autoimmune disorder that affects those who produce semen. Think of it like allergies. For those with seasonal allergies, going outside is a terrible ordeal without having an antihistamine at hand. The same goes for POIS. After finishing sexy time, flu-like symptoms kick in. Those flu-like symptoms are an immune response. If you have POIS, your body treats the excreted semen like bacteria to make you sick and symptoms show up nearly every single time. They can last up to a week after orgasm too. Unfortunately, there isn't a cure for POIS. However, you can manage the symptoms by cleaning up the area after sexy time is over. Upon doctor approval, intake of appropriate symptom dampening medications may also be an appropriate treatment. Number three, sexual aversion disorder. Sexual aversion disorder, or SAD, is similar to HSDD but it's more extreme. SAD has six subtypes, and based on the cause, it can be mild or severe. So while HSDD is meh to have sex, sexual aversion disorder turns that meh into active fear of sex. This fear manifests as constant rejection and active avoidance of all sexual contact with their partner. As bad as that sounds, since it's a form of HSDD, the same treatments can apply. Number four, coital cephalgia. You know what's normal to be felt after an orgasm? Good things. Relaxation, warmth, sometimes lightness. That thing called the afterglow. Know what's not normal? A migraine. Unfortunately, coital cephalgia is just that. An orgasm so strong it gives you a migraine. Not something to celebrate. As strange as it sounds, sex causes stress, but it's not the kind of stress you're thinking about the kind that comes from spending too much time at the office. When you orgasm, there's a massive amount of oxytocin and dopamine being released into your bloodstream. That is why it feels so good and can sometimes make you feel really intense emotions. However, post-coitus, your hormones lower, but their effect on your body does not diminish immediately. High levels of oxytocin, like the ones released during orgasm, can tighten your blood vessels and eventually increase the pressure in your head, thus giving you a headache. Typically, men experience coital cephalgia, but it can affect some women too. Although it's kind of scary because the head pain is pretty sudden, it's not fatal. Treatment can include simply taking regular migraine medication and exercising. Exercising can reduce the chance of vasoconstriction during physical exertion. Number five, retrograde ejaculation. No, it doesn't have anything to do with mercury being in retrograde. Thankfully, we're done with that. But for those who do have retrograde ejaculation, it might feel like the planet Mercury might be at fault. Why? Because retrograde ejaculation means your semen flows in the wrong direction. Crazy, right? Gravity or the tide of the oceans having nothing to do with it. Simply put, the reason semen is flowing backwards is because of your sphincter. Your sphincter is a muscle located at the neck of your bladder. During coitus, it tightens to prevent your semen from mixing with other fluids kind of like traffic control. 
Under normal circumstances, it blocks flow in the bladder lane and allows the sperm to pass through the vas deferens, prostate, and urethra before exiting out of the penis. With the retroactive ejaculation, the sphincter goes on a break and everything is left to sort itself out. The sperm flows where it wants and winds up at the bladder. The sphincter is on a perma break and those muscles don't close, so semen takes the path of least resistance up the neck of the bladder, which is shorter. Although it's not harmful and it doesn't affect your ability to feel pleasure, it can be awkward, especially if you and your partner are trying to conceive. If it has become a serious concern, reach out to your doctor to come up with a solution plan. Sex is a wonderful thing. It would do all of us a heap of good to know a little more about it, if for nothing else to recognize when our health is compromised. Bottom line, if you've got questions, medical professionals have many answers. So reach out and get to know more about this excellent aspect of life. We think it'd be super sexy if you touched our like button, by the way, just saying.